this video, we're going to take a look at the absolute value parent graph. And you see a key feature or a key thing to look at when you're looking at absolute value is the big V that it creates. Because an absolute value makes everything that's inside it positive. When you have just simply the y equals the absolute value of x, you're never going to have any negative values because that's what the absolute value does. So as we talk about these key features, let's start with the locator point. As always, that's going to be at the point h comma k. And the title we use for that is the vertex, which is similar to the parabola. It represents what comes down and flips to go to the other way. Um, sometimes it is called the cusp, C-U-S-P, which is a vocabulary term that means sharp, abrupt change. So you can see that that occurs in your absolute value, comes down and briefly, abruptly, sharply changes to go in a positive direction. Now the graphing form is going to be y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h, and then that finishes that up, and then plus k. So the x minus h is inside where the x was in your original equation. The domain here, you can do the absolute value of all values, negative, positive, zero, etc. So the domain is going to be all reals here. You can also use the inequality notation. So that would be negative infinity is less than x, which is less than the positive infinity. Now, as we move this graph, you can see that it does affect the range because the range is determined by the y values. So if I move down with my graph and then it comes back up abruptly, then the range is going to be always positive or greater than or equal to k if a is greater than zero. So you can see that my a value is positive right now. A is always, as you move one unit from your locator point to the right, that distance up is the a value. If I take that a value and shift it down and come down here, now you can see that the range had, would have to be below that k value. So you have two different options for those ranges. It's always going to be based upon that k value. So it's either going to be greater than k or equal to. If a is greater than 0 or if a is less than 0, y is going to be less than or equal to k. So positive a and negative a for those particular graphs. So again, that a value is just whatever that distance is above that locator point hk. So you can see here, this a value here is equal to 3. And you can see that in your actual equation. You can shift all of this around, and you can move it left, right, up, and down. And you can see how your h values change as that occurs. But the a value is always equal to 3, because if you move 1 to the right, of your locator point, you would move up three in this particular scenario. So there is some symmetry here, because as you can tell, as you can see, if you have whatever's on the left side, is the same as on the right side. So there's this line of symmetry, which is vertical. So we have a vertical line of symmetry, much like our parabola, that's going to be at x equals h. And there is not any asymptotes here, because we're not tending towards one particular value. So you have your a, you have your h and your k. h is always, just like it was for the parabola, h is always going to be what happens when you move your locator point left and right. k is always going to be what happens when you move your locator point up and down. Now the Moodle syntax is when you have to write that in there, you are going to be expected to do so. So we try to keep it as simple as possible. a, use your absolute value bar x minus h inside it, close the absolute value, and then plus k. Notice you don't need any parentheses here because x minus h is already grouped together inside those absolute values. a is automatically being multiplied by that in this format. So yeah, it looks exactly like your graphing form. You don't need to worry about parentheses or anything because the absolute value takes care of it. 